Good evening and a warm welcome to Connected Life. My name is Elisa Gödde and I'm glad that you could join us tonight. Our topic today in one week starts the spreading of liquid manure or slurry. That's reason for us to talk about our Krone near control dual sensor. One sensor, two areas of application. And we are talking about the near technology in dual use. This could be of high interest to some contractors, especially if you have forage harvesting as well as manure spreading in your portfolio. I have three experts with me today. Thorsten Schiermann, the product manager of our digital portfolio. Daniel Büter, product specialist for forage harvesters. And from the company Zunhammer, Christian Grachtrup. Daniel, if you could briefly outline what we are talking about today. Thank you, Elisa, for the introduction. And good evening also from my side. The whole topic of near technology in dual use, there are several points on the agenda that we want to look at today. Let's start chronologically. As you said, we are soon going to start the spreading of slurry. Consequently, we are starting with the Zunhammer Van Control Duel, which will be explained by Christian Grachtrup in a minute. Afterwards, chronologically, is the harvest. Here we have the Krone Near Control Duel, and I will explain to you the content analysis during grass and maize harvest. Last but not least, the topic of data management with Thorsten Schiermann, where we will hear about topics like agri-router, next machine management, next farming, and smart telematics. So we are looking at a range of topics and how to interlink these via data management. And we will see how these systems enhance each other so that we create yield maps during harvest which we can then use as the basis for application maps for manure spreading and which opportunities this creates for arable farming, which opportunities we see in feed ration planning um, and all these topics we will discuss tonight. So a rounded and interesting program. Thank you, Daniel. And for you at home, please ask your questions in the chat or write an email to mbk.life at krone.de. And please stay tuned because at the end of the show, there will be a competition again where you can participate by answering the question. Christian. Near technology, some people also call it NIRS, the sensor. We might have to briefly explain what is meant by NIR. Good evening also from my side. NIRS is the abbreviation of Near Infrared Spectroscopy and it is the physical detection of the data that is generated when matter gets illuminated by a light source. Some wavelengths are absorbed, others are reflected, and this results in a spectral fingerprint. And these spectral fingerprints are digitally evaluated via the near sensor and are then converted to measured values via a stored database. How do you apply this in your machines? We measure the nutrients in slurry as it passes through in real time. So the farmer or contractor has the data directly at hand to work with. It can be used to regulate application, which we will talk about in a minute, but it can also be used for documentation purposes. Um, slurry is currently rising in value as mineral fertilizer prices have risen. So we can also show the real fertilizer value of the liquid manure. For example, when a farmer takes liquid manure from another farmer, there's complete transparency about the amount of nutrients that changed hands. We heard that nutrients are detected, but a key word is recognized or certified by DLG. What does that mean? The sensor has been recognized by DLG. That means we measure dry matter content, 
total nitrogen, ammonium nitrogen, phosphorus pentoxide and potassium oxide. These parameters that are displayed in the terminal. The sensor has passed the DLG tests for the second time in liquid manure technology and is certified accordingly. We see here an overview of the parameters which are certified by the DLG. In some countries, these parameters are already recognized by the agricultural civil authorities so that the results can be used for official documentation purposes and there is no longer the need to send samples to the laboratory. What else is special? It can be used in three different ways. We can use it directly on the slurry tanker, so we can do the measurements on the tractor pulled tanker. And then we can install it on the self-propelled tanker, of which Zunhammer produces a range, so that also here the nutrients are directly measured while um, spreading, which can be used for regulation or documentation purposes. And then there are mobile nutrient measurement stations which can be set up temporarily, for example by a large barn or large slurry storage or an anaerobic digester to measure and document the complete nutrient loading. There are different variants, so you can put this station behind the tractor to move it, but you can also move it on a handcart in a smaller version. Um, or you can put it behind a car and so you have the unit exactly where you need it. The sensor itself is already well established and you have a USP in comparison to competitors where others can only analyze cattle and pig slurry. What can your sensor do? The special thing is, first of all, that the whole database is on the sensor, so you only need to connect it to have power supply and you need a display, which is usually a terminal, but you do not need an online connection because the sensor can work autonomously offline. And the other special feature is that apart from cattle and pig slurry, as well as fermentation residues from biogas plants, it can also measure mixed slurry and is DLG certified for that. We see an increasing market share of mixed slurry of more than 20 to 30 percent, which means um, this can also be measured and documented. We've collected some impressions and put together a little video to see how the near sensor is integrated into the workflow. You see here a farmer spreading slurry in spring onto a grain crop, giving the plants the nutrients they need. The data can be prepared in the farm office from yield potential maps. These maps can be displayed on the tractor via ESOBUS or can be displayed separately. The prepared data is transferred to the tractor via AgriRouter. The driver as the executing person confirms that the data arrived uploads the order and executes it. We can see the different zones documented in color so that the nutrients get to where they are needed. When slurry spreading is completed, the measured data is sent again via AgriRouter to the farm office into the farm management software so that it can be used for documentation and the application maps can be uploaded into field mapping software so that the data can be used in the coming years. We are standing next to one of your slurry tankers. What do I need in terms of hardware if I want to work with near technology? 
On the one hand, a terminal is needed to display the parameters. Here you can see your location in the field, in which application zone you are. It can be a separate terminal to be mounted on the tractor, or it can be a fixed terminal in the tractor. Every ESOBUS enabled terminal can display the data. Then you need the near sensor, which can be mounted onto round or rectangular pipes. The sensor has a 50 mm measuring head where the slurry passes by to be measured. A further important part is the hydrostatic pump drive as a control unit. The PTO shaft drives the hydraulic pump, which in turn controls the slurry spreading according to specifications from the terminal. Consequently, the hydrostatic pump drive acts like a vario gearbox. As it decouples the engine speed of the tractor from the pump speed of the tanker, which simplifies operations for the driver and is exactly adjustable and thus an ideal prerequisite to regula regulate spreading. Where on the machine would I find the sensor? Let's go to the back of the machine, which is an 18.5 tandem axle. At Sunhammer we have an eco-series, where slurry is pumped through the frame. You see the near sensor attached to the rear below the distribution frames. It measures the nutrients when the tank is filled, so that an average value is immediately available for further use. Also, when spreading, the slurry is again pumped through the frame to the distributor at the back, so that real-time data is recorded, which can be used. Many thanks, Christian. At Sunhammer, it's called Van Control Dual. We call it Crone Near Control Dual. Daniel, we have the sensor here. How quickly can I get it from the slurry tanker onto our big X? That's really simple. As we know, it has to be simple so that you like doing it and get it done quickly. And then you are flexible in the dual use. We have here the adapter plate. The sensor is mounted onto the dis discharge of the forage harvester. We see here four screws and a central plug and play data transfer and power supply. With the plug and play, the sensor recognizes whether it's mounted on a Sunhammer slurry tanker or on a Krone forage harvester. This is also done automatically. So within a few minutes, you can change machines and integrate it into the system via a simple plug and play. If I pick up the sensor, you see the top of the mounting plate and here the bottom where you can see the near technology as it will work with the harvested crop flow to analyze the contents. So it's very simple handling and high flexibility of use is the keyword. We heard from Christian which contents the sensor can analyze in the slurry tanker. What can the sensor analyze on the big X? I can use it in maize and grass harvest. First of all, it's the dry matter content measurement for both. But of course, for maize, we also measure starch. And then we measure the following for both crude ash, crude fat, crude protein, crude fiber, NDF, ADF, and sugar contents. Why does the farmer or contractor need this information? Why is it valuable? 
For the farmer, it is important to know what contents they have in their silage. Nowadays, we are constantly optimizing feed rations, which is a central topic for efficient feeding. So, already knowing at harvest which quality is in my silage, what are the consequences for my ration planning, what will I have to supplement in terms of other crops throughout the year, so, for example, if the first cut isn't of great quality, so that you can react to it, for example, by supplementing individual components. Or, on the other hand, if the grass and maize harvests are excellent, with high nutritional value, you can maximize forage performance. We heard that the sensor is DLG recognized for the nutrient measurement in slurry. What does it look like for Krohn? We also were tested by DLG and also received DLG recognition. This was done in the past weeks during the last maize harvest. And we received DLG recognition for dry matter content analysis. You can read up on this in our communications over the last weeks. We also brought a little video along to see how our forage harvester works with the near sensor. Here you can see our forage harvester during mice harvest. You see one sensor, two applications. You see the maize on the silage trailer. You see the first sensual assessment to see and feel the quality, but of course also the measured contents that are displayed on the terminal and referenced to the specific areas in the field. You can then transfer the data to your farm management software, you see here next machine management, and of course a key feature to then transfer the data from harvest to application maps to use with Zunhammer slurry technology. And then it's back to the forage harvester. And so it's optimal use if you use harvest data to apply slurry according to yield potential and then use the sensor again during harvest. All in all, a perfect round thing in the cooperation of slurry technology and harvest technology. Thank you, Daniel. That brings us to our next topic. Torsten, which opportunities do digital systems hold and which solutions do we offer at Krohn for the whole topic of data management? Welcome also from my side. From Krohn, we have the following options. We have just seen in the video how the data is visualized on a terminal in the forage harvester. This data can be supplied as a printout to the customer or farmer directly on the field so that they have immediately access to the data. You can do a similar thing at Sunhammer via the CCI terminal where you can use a USB stick and can also create a report directly and make it available to the customer. You can see the corresponding papers here. We've arrived in the age of the paperless office. What are the options? How does the data get to my office computer? You are absolutely right. How is the data transferred? At Krone, we have a smart connect box in our machines. This is a telemetry unit that sends the data, for example, to our own portal mycrone.green, where you find the service telematics. In smart telematics, you can visualize the data. You can see now what it looks like in smart telematics. 
On the left you see the data that gets transmitted by the machine. You can see the machine specific data, but also near sensor data, as you can see on the bottom left. On the right hand side you can see the tram lines that were used and you can also display yield maps here. You can also create reports in Smart Telematics that you can customize yourself. For example, if you don't want all the machine data included, if you want to include everything, you can show machine data, yield data and extended yield data. In this case, I created a report including yield and extended yield data. Why differentiate? Because some clients probably only want to know yield and dry matter content and probably not the detailed content. So I can decide what to include. On the right hand side you see what a yield map would look like. How do I connect the data I'm generating during slurry spreading with the data I'm generating during harvest? The connection of data is via AgriRouter. You can connect our Smart Connect box via AgriRouter. Similarly with the CCI terminal, for which you use a normal Wi-Fi dongle. You can integrate that into AgriRouter and then send data between your farm management system and the terminal or our Smart Connect box back and forth. We brought an example from Next Machine Management with us. Here you can see the same field we previously saw in Smart Telematics. You see a yield map including the different zones with high and low yields. At the bottom left is a tab where you can select what you want to visualize, for example dry matter content, starch, or ADF, NDF, based on your preference. You can also book it into Next Machine Management as a measure taken or action so that it's documented in the field maps. Next Machine Management works with live data, with autolog data or with task data that can be uploaded via USB. If I have data in Next Machine Management, I can create reports similar to Smart Telematics, where I can include the near sensor data and, if wished, also machine data. If I have a yield map, it provides information about where yields are high or low, respectively. This is interesting information to adjust nutrient management accordingly. This can, information can be enriched, for example, with Sentinel data or talking fields maps that can be uploaded or soil test results so that you can create zones for high or low nutrient application. These application maps can then be sent via AgriRouter, for example, to a Zunhammer slurry tanker, which can then use it to adjust application. Once you spread the slurry, as we all know, regulatory requirements are getting stricter. We need to assess fertilizer requirement and need to be able to document this. So when you apply slurry according to the application map, you then document how much was actually applied where. This is what you see now in the picture. You see exactly where the slurry tanker went and how much nitrogen was applied. Similar for phosphate or dry matter content. This all can be visualized per field and documented accordingly. If you calculated fertilizer requirement, you can then assess via the balance how much mineral fertilizer you can apply. When I transfer the data from the slurry tanker to Next Machine Management, 
I can also here create a report where again I can decide how much data I want to include. In this case, everything is included. This way you can provide transparent documentation to the farmer so they can assess what has been done. And in various federal states of Germany, this already fulfills the duty of documentation requirements. Thanks to all of you. The sensor in dual use on the one hand for slurry spreading and then also for maize and grass harvest. A perfect match. It helps with requirement-based fertilization and based on the harvest data and software systems, it makes our work in the field easier and increases efficiency in the field. I hope you could all take some interesting aspects with you today. You can also read up on this in our customer magazine, Extra Blood, where you will find the article on pages 26 to 29. For those of you who don't receive the Extra Blood, we will include the link to the PDF in the video description. That brings us to the end of the show and our competition. To participate, please scan the QR code answer the question correctly and then you are in the draw to win. This week you can win a set from our Cronected series, including an organizer bag, mug and a cap. Next week we'll be back with our colleague Alexander Esselmann talking about from the mountain to the valley, crone, tedders and rakes for every situation. We will also present the features which guarantee a high feed quality. So I hope to see you again next week.